from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. And we start with late breaking news this noon. Investigators have made a capital murder arrest. It's for the murder of 17 year old Caitlin Hernandez. You might recall her body was found in the 7600 block of Del Oak back on March 12th of this year. That's after her family didn't hear for her from her for several hours. Officers tell us the person they arrested is a juvenile, so they did not give us his name. SAPD says they were able to make an arrest after DNA from the victim matched the person last seen with that victim. We'll have more on this story as information becomes available tonight on news at five and six. We started the day with drizzle and light showers. Very nice, but things could ramp up later on this afternoon. Justin Horn is tracking it all for us this noon, so more rain on the way, Justin. Yes, uh, we think there will be showers and storms this afternoon, and we have a new flood watch. that's going to go into effect at 3 p.m. today that covers parts of the area. Let me show it to you here. San Antonio up to Kerrville, Bernie, down to Carn City and points east into the northeast. This is where we could see some heavy rain, although I'll tell you, I think a lot of this is going to be localized. Still, we know how that works around here. It, uh, the creeks and streams can swell pretty quickly. Uh, depending on where this heavy rain falls. But I do think any storm that develops today will have the potential to put down some pretty heavy rain. So far, we haven't seen that just yet. It's all been light. Uh, showers and drizzle working through the city of San Antonio right now. You'll notice the radar doesn't show a whole lot. Certainly no thunderstorms, at least not yet. But we think as we get into the afternoon that this radar will become quite a bit more busy and we'll start to see some thunderstorms blossoming around the area right now. Again, just some light showers, especially on the north side of Bear County. Here's a look at the forecast, and this is just one computer model. I think it overdoes it just a little bit, but it shows some of these thunderstorms starting to take shape around 2 or 3 o'clock this afternoon and then push north. This is 4 o'clock. We'll see scattered showers and storms, and even going into dinner time, uh, we can see more of this activity. We'll also watch what's going on to our west and northwest. As some of those storms could swing into the area tonight, especially up across the hill country. And again, any one of these storms could put down some pretty heavy rain. Even 10 o'clock, still showing some storms around. So going into tonight, we'll have to watch for the potential of storms continuing. Right now, I have the highest rain chances between 3 and 9 o'clock. But again, even overnight, there's still a 40% chance of some storms lingering around. And that may even go into tomorrow morning. We're going to talk much more about this, the risk that we'll see with these storms, the severe weather risk. That's coming up here in just a couple minutes, guys. All right, well, stay tuned for that. Thank you, Justin. News this noon, the Bear County Sheriff's Office hoping someone can help them solve a at least part of a mystery. They're trying to find out the identity of a woman who has been found dead and learn more about how she died. Katrina Weber live in West Bear County near Highway 90 and Highway 211. That's where the woman's body was found this morning. And Katrina, we understand it was a teenager who made the discovery. That's right. The sheriff told us it was a girl on her school bus heading to high school who happened to look out the window and noticed the body there in the tree line there behind me. Now, the girl called her mother, who the sheriff says came out here, verified that was true, and then called the sheriff's office. Well, from there, this whole area became a crime scene with deputies shutting down this road. Sheriff Javier Salazar says the woman who they found dead appears to be in her 30s or 40s. He's not sure yet whether she may have been hit by a car or a perhaps dumped here, but he says it appears she has been here a few days. Also unknown at this point is who the woman is. Salazar says she does have a distinctive tattoo. It's a floral type tattoo on her left forearm, um, and it's it's uh, one color. It's only a black black tattoo. It's not uh, doesn't have uh, coloring on it. The salsa also re released a description of the woman's clothing. He says she had on black yoga pants with shorts on top of them, a blue paisley print shirt, and he says she has black hair that she was wearing in high pigtails. Now, it seems there's a lot that they still don't know, and the sheriff's office does ask anyone who might recognize that description or know something about this case to give them a call. The number to call is 210-335-6000. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Now to the latest in a cutting investigation on the east side. Police say a man confronted someone who he thought might be stealing from a truck. Officers tell us the man noticed someone rummaging through an acquaintance's truck bed. 
When the victim walked up to the suspect, the suspect did not appear to have been taken anything from that vehicle, but the pair then got into an argument, and that's when police say the suspect slashed the victim in the throat. SAPD says the suspect took off on a bicycle. So far, no arrests have been made. It's a popular destination among tourists and locals, and now we're learning more uh, that there were more violent incidents during this year's Fiesta celebrations there, besides the deadly shooting that you may have heard about over the weekend. At 11 o'clock on Saturday night, police arrested a man with a semi-automatic rifle at Market Square. That happened about an hour before Sunday's deadly shooting that we told you about. But there were some other problems, too. A week earlier on Saturday, April 20th, SAPD says officers heard a gunshot at a musical stage under I-35 near Market Square. They arrested a man who had a gun. And then on Monday, April 22nd, police arrested someone for throwing an object at an officer and cutting his nose. Officers also arrested another person for punching an officer as they broke up a fight. Police also issued several uh, citations to people for fighting. SAPD Chief William McManus has promised additional safety measures for next year's Fiesta, but it's unclear exactly what those might look like. Police Chief McManus has already mentioned a few of those things. Don't expect to not be checked, your bags and things like that uh, in this event next year. But they're going to give us a full slate of recommendations. Police say two suspects ended up dying in Sunday's shooting, but four bystanders were hit as well. A scam about jury duty has been making the rounds here in Bear County. There's reportedly been several people who were called by someone saying that they missed their jury duty and had an outstanding warrant for their arrest. The caller then threatens the person who answers the phone, saying unless they pay thousands of dollars in fines, they will be arrested. Jury service officials say if a resident does miss jury duty, a letter will be mailed to them. They also say the office will not try to collect money. If you think you've been victim of this scam, you're asked to call the Central Jury Services Department. A local hospital is hiring. Westover Hills Baptist Hospital has a job fair. It's coming up tomorrow. Westover Hills Baptist Hospital is the newest hospital of the Baptist Health System. It's set to open soon, so it's looking for several positions to fill. Some of those positions they're hiring for, nurses, lab, radiology techs, phlebotomists, administrators, security officers, food services staff, and housekeeping personnel. Candidates will have the opportunity to meet with and interview with the hiring leaders. So if you're interested, bring your resume along. Some people could be offered a job right there on the spot. This job fair is from 3.30 to 6.30 tomorrow afternoon at the Hyatt Hill Country Resort and Spa. It is the first day of May. It also marks the start of the 61st anniversary of Older Americans Month. That's why the city decided to honor senior citizens this morning with three proclamations. I'm really proud of the senior centers. I know the senior caregivers do so much. So we're recognizing three groups today and it's just important that they understand that we, we see them and we, we hear them when they, need, um, when they need things from the city. The city has 11 comprehensive senior centers. A 12th is set to open later this year in District 4. They provide all sorts of resources to older folks from creative outlets, meals, health screenings. All kinds of fun stuff at those senior centers. Yes, I've been there. Uh -huh. I did a story on the one up there near Thousand Oaks. Oh, That's okay. why I showed up there. Felt right at home. The Cowboys new running back ready to get fed. But is he really a new running back? We'll have that for you coming up. If you are looking to adopt a new pet starting today, you can do so at a discount. San Antonio Pets Alive now offering a reduced adoption fee for puppies, kittens, cats, and dogs. It's until May 15th. The nonprofit organization will offer $25 adoptions at all three San Antonio uh, locations for Pets Alive. It's part of the Bissell Pet Foundation's effort to end pet homelessness. The hours that will vary at each of those locations. We've got all the information for you on our website, ksat.com. As more big names are added to San Antonio's list of tour dates, scoring cheap tickets might be getting tough. Yeah, some of the big names are coming here. This is awesome. 
Live Nation Concerts Week includes several big shows right here in the Alamo City and around Texas. During its promotion, Live Nation will sell a limited number of tickets at reduced prices for specific shows. Some fans can score a seat up to 75% off. It's happening from May 7th through the 14th. Some of the San Antonio shows on that list include Lionel Richie's concert on June 4th, Jennifer Lopez on July 5th, and the band Korn on October 21st. Which one are you going to go to? I haven't decided yet. All right. I know which one Justin Horn's going to go. So Do you? Yeah, he's going to go to that corn concert. Yeah, that's, that's up his alley right there. <laughs> yeah, not bad. Not bad. All those artists are pretty good, honestly. Not Lionel Richie. Oh, come on. Wrong generation. I'm only going if he walks on the ceiling. <laughs> it's dancing. It's dancing. <laughs> well, okay, either way. Uh, <laughs> as old as we all are, maybe walking on the ceiling yeah, now. Yeah, it's okay. close. <laughs> <laughs> the aquifer is up four tenths of a foot to 639.3. And your pollen count, moles are high, 1,090. Pine, grass, pecan are all low. Rain chances increase this afternoon. Storm chances, too. We'll talk about it. Coming up. The next generation of TV technology. It's taking the over-the-air environment and making it digital. It's a real upgrade for viewers. So the reason why we have a new system is because everything's changing in the media landscape. Do you watch KSAP using an antenna? If so, you're what's called. All right, KSAP making the switch to Next Gen TV. If you watch KSAP on cable, you stream us or you use a satellite to get us, you don't have to do anything. But if you're watching us using an antenna, then you're going to have to rescan your TV to see KSAT once we make the switch on Tuesday, or rather Monday. We're planning to do that Monday, Monday, Monday at 2 p.m. All right, understanding what Next Gen TV is all about and why we're making the switch can be pretty confusing. So if you have any questions, all you got to do is scan that QR code right there. It's going to take you to a section of our website dedicated to all you need to know. And on Monday, we're going to be holding a phone bank just to answer your questions about all this. Phone lines are going to be open from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m. on Monday. We're going to be releasing the phone number to call just before that time. And our KSAT Explains team is on the job, too. They did an episode on Next Gen TV, and you can check that out and get your questions answered, probably a lot of them. It is on YouTube or KSAT.com. I know a lot of people have cut the cord. They don't live stream. They don't do any of that. They just right. watch digital right. TV. And, so and that is, a, you know, it's a it's a whole new world. Yeah, it is. So um, for us, check it out on Monday. Wasn't that from a Disney movie? It's a oh. whole. Oh world. no, he's gonna sing yeah. again. Oh. <laughs> I, know, I just I, I so anyway. Okay, so the Pe People Magazine's beautiful issue, right? Yes. Just dropped, and is Mike on the cover? You know. <laughs> How did you know that's what I was thinking? Um, no, you are definitely not on the cover. No, no, yeah. no. Did, did you guys see who it is? And I mean, this is very mm -hmm. worthy of it. Mm -hmm. It was uh, Sofia Vergara. Okay. Yeah. So. At 51 years old, looking gorgeous as ever. Absolutely. So we want to know, who would you put on oh, the cover of man. People's Beautiful Issue? It who? could be anyone in your yeah. life. Scan that QR code and let oh. us know. <laughs> who would you put on? <laughs> Have we stumped those two? Did they just no. get a close-up on you? No, 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 no. no. Ignore oh, that. Ignore that. <laughs> I've never, I've never heard you two so quiet. Did we stump you? Watch yeah. this. My wife would be on the cover. That yes. is the correct answer, How's David. That? Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Took the words right out of my mouth. I was going to say his wife or my husband. And I already beat you to the punch because we said that before. I said, yeah. well, of course, Bonnie. You yeah, know? And so, that yeah, is the correct answer. You want to stay married, right? <laughs> hey, the cover is big enough for all of them. Isn't I'm, it? As I always say, I'm not as dumb as I look. So yes, every, every once in a while, yeah, blind pig gets in trouble. So. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so scan that QR code and weigh in, and we will see you here live from Historic Market Square. We might have a treat for you as well. Oh, oh. Like yes. That. Yeah. Some food. Don't don't promise that yet. We're not sure. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> maybe maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. All right, Justin. That was a close call, man. Yeah. That could have gone wrong. Yeah. But we did the right thing. How yes. about you, Justin? No pressure. I'm not dumb. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are gonna get me. Uh -uh. Good luck. Yes. No. My you have wife, a beautiful of wife of course, as well. Of yes. Uh, well, what is beautiful would be some great rain. We do need some. Obviously, we don't want to deal with flooding. We don't want to deal with severe weather. 
both are possible today, but if we just got some good rain, that would be the best case scenario. Let me show you the radar right now. And we do have some showers around. It's been pretty damp throughout most of the morning. These are passing light showers. Nothing that's going to cause too many issues, but uh, you may have to briefly use your windshield wipers as uh, this rain comes through. And it's it's spotty. I mean, we've got some showers right now on the north side up uh, towards Bernie, a couple more showers uh, down there, uh, Baronic Lake. And then you get into Asco Atascosa County, a few more showers trying to show up. Now, what I will tell you is this is an area down here that we'll watch for any sort of development over the next couple of hours. So far, we haven't seen much. So the radar is still fairly quiet, at least for now. But as we head into the afternoon, uh, we do expect that, that things will be a little more active. And let me point out something here. It's Newton time, and this model shows thunderstorms already starting to take shape down there around Victoria. So we know that this model is already a little bit off. And that's what happens with these computer models. They're not perfect. And so they give us a general idea, but uh, when we look at these in this 2 o'clock, don't pay too close attention to exactly where it develops storms because it never truly has the placement perfect here. And so that the idea is that we're just going to see isolated to scattered storms developing into the afternoon, and they become more widespread as we head towards, say, 4, 5, 6 o'clock once we get into dinner time. And any place in our viewing area could see one of these storms or one of these downpours. And yes, the risk for severe weather is there today because you look at a profile of the atmosphere as you go up into the atmosphere and it's, uh, it's ripe for severe weather. It's set up correctly to where some of these storms can start to organize themselves and produce some hail or gusty winds and potentially some heavy rainfall too because there is so much moisture throughout the atmosphere as well. So as we head into tonight, this is 10 o'clock. We're still seeing the potential for storms overnight into tomorrow morning. Uh, so depending on where some of these heavier storms set up, there could be some flooding, and that's why we have that uh, flood watch that is in effect roughly from Kerrville to San Antonio, Carn City, points north and east. This is the severe weather risk, and on a scale of 1 to 5, we're at a 2. Most of our area is within that range. And uh, that means we've got a risk, as I said, for severe weather, with the higher risk being up across parts of north central Texas, San Angelo, Abilene, Wichita Falls. But if we uh, are talking about threats here, it's hail and gusty winds at top of the list. They almost always do. But we've brought flooding up some, just because, as I said, there is good moisture throughout the atmosphere. We also need to mention that while it's a low wind threat, we can't completely rule out a tornado. We can get some of these little spin ups sometimes in this kind of atmosphere. So that's something we'll be watching out for. Our forecast today, 83 at 3 o'clock, 60% chance of rain. As we head into this evening, We'll keep that good chance of rain going. 83 at 6 o'clock, 82, 7 p.m. And we'll bring rain chances down just a little bit overnight, but keep in mind there is still the potential there for some storms and pockets of heavy rain. Outside right now, 77 and cloudy dew point. Look at that, 74. That's about as high as it goes around here. So we know the atmosphere is just full of moisture. Southeasterly winds at about 10 miles per hour. In the satellite picture, well, we're not going to see much sun today. There will be some peaks here and there, but not many. 79 in Gonzales, 81 Kennedy, 79 Carrizo Springs, where we have seen just a little bit of sun. It's jumped up to 84 right now in Junction, mainly right around 80 here in San Antonio. So to break it all down for you, we've got 85 today, 60% chance of rain, mainly later this afternoon, severe weather possible. 85 tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. Then we're going to taper off our rain chances as we head into the weekend. And temperatures warm up, 87 Saturday, 88 Sunday. And we'll be looking at 90s by next week. Keep that case that weather app handy today. We'll send you out any updates if we need to. We'll be right back. And the Cowboys missed out on drafting a running back, so they went back to the well and signed former Cowboy running back Ezekiel Elliott. It is official. After seven years in Dallas, he went to New England for a year, but now he is back and ready to run. Is the one-year deal? Maximum value of about $3 million. The eight-year NFL veteran is already one of the greatest running backs in Cowboys history, third on the all-time franchise list for rushing yards. And coming in, Zeke is near closing on a few other franchise milestones. Our Lady of the Lake softball team is head and shoulders above all their competition. They are the nation's top-ranked Saints, wrapped up this regular season with an astounding 47-1 record. What happened that one game, I wonder? 
They swept their Red River Athletic Conference schedule. Next, OLLU heads to Louisiana to defend their conference crown. The Saints bring a nation-leading 43-game winning streak into the tourney. Not just the NAIA, the entire nation, including the NCAA. OLLU is in a league of their own. We always say um, we set the standard, so our average um, our average is someone else's best day. We just don't feel the pressure of being the number one seed and having to win. We just know that, you know, for seven innings or however long we're playing, we have to do what it takes to win. And I think that's what we're just focused on. Just not putting too much pressure on ourselves. Um, we've had a reputation the past couple of years and not letting um, that affect our game or affect us to put any more pressure than we already have. Once again, that was pitcher Casey Valdez, who's been instrumental in the Saints' success. She and the squad will begin their quest for the RAAC crown this Saturday against eighth seed Xavier at noon in Louisiana. Hey, it was a day for high schoolers to sign up for their college playing careers. The John J. Mustang saw 16 athletes sign their letters of intent, the group featuring a range of student athletes from football and basketball all the way to bowling. When we spoke with them, they shared how excited they are for this new milestone in their careers and what it means to represent their last name at the next level. Oh, it means everything, you know. Um, one of the biggest things for me is representing my last name. Uh, you know, in high school you don't get really to wear the name on the back of your jersey. So one of the things I'm looking forward to is wearing my name on the back of my jersey. Extremely excited. It's uh, I've always wanted to play at the next level, and I feel like I'm prepared for it. It means everything. I worked hard since like five years old, six years old, and now it's just showing. I feel excited, like I get another chance that most people don't really get a chance and I'm going to take it. I'll be training a lot during the summer and I'll be working real hard. All right, over at McCollum High School, Maddie Espinoza signed her letter of intent to play softball at Texas A&M Corpus Christi. The slugger knew the Islanders were the right choice after she took a visit there. It felt like home, she says. Maddie's so excited to get, sh to, get to share this moment with her friends and her family. Uh, it's awesome. It's I love I loved every minute of this and like it's just crazy like the amount of work I put in it finally like pays off here and like it's everything just to show that they put so much work into me and I gave them the same amount of work back. It's like proving to everybody that hard work really does pay off and just working for my family. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> All right, congratulations to all those signees. Look forward to watching them through their college years as they yeah, play their favorite sports. Such a good, good start, they, right? They are. Yeah, that's great, great stuff. Like right. to see that. We'll be right back. As promised, we're getting some rain Ooh. in our area. A little here, a little there, maybe a lot later. Look at the the. I guess yeah. the transition from light to dark with those clouds. Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That I, I, rain is falling. I think that's a shower you're seeing right there, guys, uh, just to the uh, east of the airport. So, yes, uh, we are expecting more rain, and the radar is starting to show a few more showers. Again, nothing that's heavy, at least at the moment, but we're starting to see the showers become a little more numerous and perhaps a little heavier in spots. Let's get back to the radar. And I've paused it for now to show you kind of where some of the showers are because they're pretty quick movers. But uh, that one that we were just looking at is right there. That's just east of the airport. A little shower taking shape there. And where you start to see some of the yellow colors, which we are seeing just a little bit of that, that's indicating maybe some more moderate rain versus the light rain that we have been seeing. So you're starting to see these little showers intensify just a little bit more. Nothing severe, obviously, not even close. But as we get into the afternoon, that's when some of these uh, storms can start to, uh, once we see storms, can start to blossom a little bit more into something uh, potentially strong to severe. There's also some showers uh, down here closer to 410, uh, moving towards Columbia Heights. That's moving up by 35. Again, just light showers at this point. And as we look back off to the south, which is where we'll watch for some development, there are a couple more showers there. Uh, so the radar is... Uh, showing some rain. Now, uh, what we're looking at here is the flood risk today. This is a kind of a different way to look at it, but where we think the heaviest rain will be is within this blue area. That's where we have the most moisture in the atmosphere and that these rain, these storms can produce the most efficient rain. Uh, and that's why we also have that flood watch in effect. That's for later this afternoon and tonight. So heavy rains, one thing we'll be watching closely. Uh, but also, again, the risk for some severe weather. Storm chances will be highest 
starting around, say, roughly 3 or 4 o'clock and continuing into tonight. We'll keep rain chances at 40%, even going into tomorrow morning. How long will this rain stick around? We'll talk more about that in the weekend forecast, too, coming up in just a couple minutes. Beautiful All right, Justin, thank you. Rain. May 1st, known as College Decision Day, but many students have not decided where they're going to go to college this fall. Some students are actually stuck in limbo as they wait for delayed financial award letters. High school seniors must submit a financial aid application form known as FATSA in order to qualify for federal loans, grants, and most financial aid. But there were a number of processing problems and glitches with this year's rollout. Hundreds of schools had to push back their decision deadlines because of the delays, though some are still forcing students to enroll and pay a deposit without knowing how much college will actually cost them. The Federal Reserve expected to announce its interest rate decision following a two-day meeting. Fed officials, however, are not expected to make any immediate changes to interest rates. The annual interest rate uh, inflation rate fell from 9.1 percent in June of 2022 to 3.1% in January of this year. The inflation rates though stuck around at that level ever since. Stubborn inflation rates raising concerns about when the next interest rate cut could happen. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell has previously said there's no rush to cut rates, but he likely is being pressured on how many cuts are in store. Details of the decision expected to be announced during a Wednesday afternoon. That's today press conference. The Commission on Presidential Debate says it's sticking to its planned debate schedule with its criteria being applied in early September. And the commission is extending debate invitations to qualifying candidates afterward. That's what the commission told Fox News yesterday after the Trump campaign asked the commission to move the dates earlier and add more debates. Remember, the first presidential debate on the schedule is this fall on Monday, September 16th in San Marcos on the campus of Texas State. New York police bringing peace back to Columbia University today. College campuses across the country filled with protests growing amid the war between Israel and Gaza. ABC's Alexis Christophorus tells us that some Jewish students are calling the protests anti-Semitic. Hundreds of New York City police officers moving in late Tuesday after protesters took over Hamilton Hall at Columbia University, barricading themselves inside. Columbia's president requesting the NYPD to respond in a letter to police, writing the building occupation, encampments and related disruptions pose a, quote, clear and present danger. The mayor blaming outside agitators. Well, those who broke into the building did include students. It was led by individuals who are not affiliated with the university. Police in riot gear forming a line around the perimeter, clearing protesters blocking the entrance. Officers filing into the second floor using an extended ramp on a SWAT truck. The NYPD saying nearly 120 people were arrested. The situation on their campuses had deteriorated to a point where the safety of their students faculty, staff, and the public was at risk. New video obtained by ABC News shows the NYPD operation as they clear through the building. Overnight at UCLA, <laughs> clashes erupted as pro-Israeli demonstrators surrounded a pro-Palestinian encampment. Tensions extremely high right now. The LAPD called in as it got physical on both sides, some using plywood board and barricades as weapons. Even fireworks were thrown into the encampment. At the University of Arizona, campus police using a chemical irritant early this morning as protesters gathered there. And there have also been clashes at the University of Wisconsin's Madison campus this morning. WKOW reporting police were tearing down tents set up during pro-Palestinian protests. Back here in New York, the NYPD was also called to City College overnight after university officials asked for help clearing protesters from that campus. More than 170 people were arrested there. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. PTSD, suicide, and brain injuries plaguing our military and veteran communities. However, doctors right here in San Antonio are trying to do something important about it. 
eight new studies just finished being funded to research how we can best treat these conditions. The Strong Star Consortium is a collection of national researchers studying the psychological health of active duty military members and veterans. It was just granted $17 million for eight individual studies under the same umbrella. Three of those studies are about suicide. One is traumatic brain injury. Two deal with PTSD, one long-term follow-up of people who have gone through therapy. Working together, we're asking separate questions and not uh, duplicating, but we're also uh, asking similar questions of our patients so that we can, we can combine and, and compare across studies. For example, explosions during combat that cause brain trauma can also cause psychological trauma, meaning there's a need to study how to treat both at the same time. The same goes for the connection between PTSD and suicide. One of these studies will look at possible success of combining short-term medication with long-term therapies for suicide prevention. Outside with live cam, a few minutes ago, the camera was showing us a little split between not rain and rain. It looks, it still looks like it's raining out there close to the airport, Justin. Yeah, you can still see that shower out there yeah. just to the east of the airport. I was able to cut my lawn yesterday, turn the sprinklers off. I'm excited about the rain today. <laughs> we just don't want the severe weather. And so far we haven't seen much of it. It's just been light shower activity that continues to work up through San Antonio. Now as the day wears on, we are expecting to get more storms to develop. Almanac for today, so far 77 is the high, 73 the low. The averages are 83 and 62. Records are 99 and 44, so back in 1929 and 1903. Another look at that radar for you and the forecast with the uh, possibility of storms coming up. I got that one shower going right there. Well, more than one, but Justin, we can see that one. Justin's having a very good day. Yeah, very good day. He's already mowed his grass. I did. Turned wow. off the sprinklers. I did. It rained. Yes, and a little bit. And your co-anchor made you homemade soup today on a Ooh. cold, dismal, Does it get any better day. than that? And he's going to put his wife's picture on the cover of Time Magazine. <laughs> Man, I'm like four for four. This he, is is, he is killing it today. Oh, what a day. What a day. Uh, yes, the bonus would be if we got some good rain. It's a fine line, though, because as we've been talking about, we don't want the flooding or severe weather, but some good rain. Uh, I think we'd all welcome that here in San Antonio. Let's first start with a look outside, that shower that we've been watching off in the distance, starting to move off to the north, but we have noticed some wet roads there around the airport. And temperatures right now 77, but look at the relative humidity, 90%. The air is so very thick, and not only is there good moisture here at the surface where we are, but all the way up through the atmosphere, there is good moisture, which is why any storm that develops today will have potential to put down some pretty good rainfall totals. 72 in Pernie, 75 in Kerrville, and everyone's looking at a southeasterly wind. There's another look at the radar, and so far it's all been light stuff. Nothing that would cause any flooding issues at all. Uh, but we'll continue to watch and see if uh, some of this activity that we have down to the south and east starts to uh, gain a little bit strength or get a little more widespread. So far that has not happened. Uh, as we look at the activity there around Pleasanton, really just light showers, sprinkly stuff that is working through, and that's the case across most of San Antonio. It's not to say it won't cause some slick roads. Certainly will. This is the kind of stuff that actually makes the roads a little more slick as it mixes with the oil and all that stuff. So right now, light shower activity over San Antonio, and uh, that's the latest with the radar. Now let's look forward in time. I put in a different computer model, and as I talked about earlier, these computer models they can struggle with these kind of patterns because there's a, there's a lot of different factors at play here. Uh, but this particular model puts a couple of showers or storms in play around 2 o'clock, and then it becomes a little more widespread for 5 o'clock, but not as widespread as that previous model that we were showing. In fact, this wants to kind of center things over the hill country. Uh, again, exact locations are tough here. It's just going to be a matter of where some of these heavier storms set up. But this is 8 o'clock. This shows some storms trying to come in this evening and tonight, which I think is a distinct possibility. This is midnight, and this shows some heavier rain trying to work into San Antonio overnight going into tomorrow morning. That would be a time frame that would be concerning because it's overnight, it's dark, and you don't know how much water's on the road. We always say turn around, don't drown. That could especially be a, an issue tonight. Uh, if we do get some of this heavier rain, if it does come to fruition and then into tomorrow morning, most of this will have 
moved out. But the severe weather risk is there for the entire viewing area and includes basically all of our counties. And on a scale of one to five, it's a two. Still fairly low in risk, but it jumps up as you get up in the parts of north central Texas, out towards San Angelo and, and Midland. But with the, uh, with the way the atmosphere is set up today, I certainly think we could see some hail and gusty winds with any of the stronger storms. And we talked about flooding and even the tornado we can't completely roll out. Uh, we could get some little spin ups again. The, the atmosphere is somewhat set up for that. It's, it's still a low end risk, uh, but we can't completely roll it out. And the flooding risk, this uh, shows where we think uh, we'll have numerous uh, storms that produce heavy rain, Austin to Fredericksburg down to San Antonio. And that's where we have that flood watch in effect that starts at three o'clock and goes through tomorrow morning. Uh, and, and so that's where some of the thicker moisture is in the atmosphere. Something we'll also be watching. So your forecast today, 83 at three o'clock, 60% chance of rain. We'll keep that going into this evening, 82 at seven o'clock. And then overnight, still some decent rain chances with temperatures in the 70s, showers and storms. And then tomorrow we'll start to drop those rain chances down 30% on Thursday, 85, 86 Friday, 20% chance of rain, small chance on Saturday. And then from there, it turns more summer like we'll get temperatures in the 90s coming up on Monday and Tuesday. Oof. Humidity and 90 degrees. So much to look forward to. Thank you. <laughs> yep. Today we recognize another educator who is proud. First Mark Credit Union to teach in our community that he knows and loves so well. Alex Olivares grew up on the South Side and now he's a U.S. history teacher at Harlandale High School where students say he makes learning fun. Stephanie Cerna introduces us to Mr. Olivares, KSAT's Educator of the Month for April. I'm Megan with KSAT. On behalf of First Mark Credit Union and KSAT, okay. we'd like to award you Educator of the Month. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. So whatever history and there are certain things that you have to do. Alex Olivares has been teaching U.S. history for the last three years and teaching at Harlandale High School for 11 years now. He's super swift. He says he keeps his students engaged by bringing the energy to the classroom. Taylor Swift belongs to my generation, just so you know. I really enjoy this class and enjoy the subject in general because it's what I love to do. It's what I went to school for. And... If I can help them love history a little bit more each day, then I've done my job. Yeah, that's interesting to know because they think Austin is the music capital, right? A lot and of watching him too. teach, it's clear he has the attention and respect of his students. He knows how to talk to us and use like certain words that we use to make us focus better, like slang, I guess. And it makes it better to come over here because it's more enjoyable to listen to him talk. And he knows a lot about what he's talking about. I grew up in the neighborhood. Uh, my mother went here back in the 1970s and I've always wanted to, to be here. This was my for, first choice right, right after college, right in college, I did my student teaching here and I was fortunate to get a position here and I've been here ever since. And aside from his work in the classroom, Mr. Olivares has also been out on the field coaching baseball. Yay! It's fantastic, the, the recognition is very important to our staff and our community. And uh, you picked a very great candidate, Mr. Olivares. And the whole, the, the whole department is, is very happy for him, and we are too here in our Honolulu community. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Well, Mike came through for us because he, he said, well, wait, he, 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 he what about promised. me? Wait. Well, I was part of that too. Was that Fiona's idea? <laughs> It was Fiona's idea. Okay. Yeah. We'll give credit to Fiona then. Okay. Well, How you know what? I'm going to give her all the credit because you would have probably eaten it before it got here. So thanks, Fiona. I, okay. This I is, actually haven't had a bite yet. So How are well. they, this by the way? This is like the hot dog from heaven. Mm. It's got wow. bacon, jalapenos, uh, grilled onions, tomato, mayonnaise, yep. and mustard. Did I hit oh, everything? Yeah. And is that everything? What and we could, the man we can thank mm -hmm. is Manuel Rodriguez. Uh, Fiona said, or excuse me, Ursula said it's like the hot dog from heaven. So, yes, so, okay. Yeah. Hello, guys. Uh, we're going to have nine different hot dogs from different parts of Mexico, and we have a great deal. And uh, the different parts of Mexico, that's why there are different toppings on each one. Yes, and we'll tell you about that great deal coming up on Sunday. All right. And we've got great hot dogs. What else is a great food? Pizza. Pizza. Jen? <laughs> That's right, and you're going to get a piece of some great deals here at Perry's Pizzeria and Tap House. But guess what? We're celebrating National Salad Month. Look at these salads. They are 
beautiful, some of my favorite. We'll tell you what's in those. Eat that first, right? It's shareable, but then go for the nachos. Look at these Italian nachos. We're gonna share some great deals that they have this month. Stay with us. Wow, that looked good. Mm -hmm. And the salad's a little bit on the healthier side, right? Right, and if you, summer's coming up, yep. it might be time to start thinking about making some lifestyle changes. Giselle Calio from MixFit SA is here, and you said never too early or? Never too late to get fit for summer. Okay, and you've got all different programs for healthy eating and workouts. We do, we're gonna share some tips with you today, and we've got a special deal for our watcher. For our right. Yeah, different couple of different deals. You're gonna have to tune in for that. I'm speaking of never too soon, how about never too early to pick up a sport? We introduce you to a cute program that's empowering kids. And we're gonna tell you about a very special shelter that takes in basically unadoptable cats and how you can help out with that. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live, so stick around.